Yeah, ready. What is Yeah, filming? it is filming. Hello and welcome to another edition of our Night Sky Guide video. In this edition, we'll be going over what to look out for during the month of July 2020. <laughs> Hello, it's Simon from Astro Dog here and this month we thought we'd try something a little bit different for our edition of our Night Sky Guide video for July. And you can see here we're in Scarborough and we've got an incredible NLC display happening behind us. Last month hosted the summer solstice and while July hosts some of the longest and brightest nights of the year, it's still a great time to go out and enjoy the night sky. While we're still in the middle of summer, we're still in the middle of the Milky Way core season, there's a good chance of seeing noctilucent clouds and there's a couple of meteor showers coming up, so there's lots to look out for throughout July. And so without further ado, let's dive in. Sunrise and sunset times throughout July will be as follows. On the 1st, the sun will rise at 4.45am and set at 9.41pm. On the 11th, the sun will rise at 4.54am and set at 9.34pm. On the 21st, the sun will rise at 5.08am and set at 9.22pm. And on the 31st, the sun will rise at 523 and set at 9.06 p.m. Moon phases now. The moon reached its new phase on the 25th of June, so we'll start the month of July as a waxing crescent. First quarter will occur on the 2nd, full moon is on the 10th, last quarter is on the 18th, and new moon will be on the 24th. As usual, the moon will be paying some close visits to other celestial objects this month, and these meetings will be discussed in more detail in our highlights section. For all the aurora chasers, even though the aurora will be very hard to see with our bright July skies, it's still worth heading out on nights when the space weather stats are looking promising. In fact, last month we witnessed an incredible aurora display that was visible to the eye from central UK despite the bright northern skies. Here's a few images and a time lapse that we captured on the 13th of June. That's right, this was in the middle of June, the brightest month of the year. It was amazing to be able to witness the aurora in the middle of summer and we love how the summer twilight colours blended with this magical northern lights display. This spectacular display just goes to show that the aurora season never truly ends and it's always worth giving it a shot despite the bright skies of midsummer. Let's all keep our fingers crossed for more great displays and if you would like to be kept in the loop with regular updates and alerts for possible aurora displays please follow our facebook page for fans of the milky way july is still a great time to capture milky way core photographs and so if you get a free night with clear skies we recommend you try to capture some milky way core photographs towards the south in the middle of the night Although the bright skies of July may be quite frustrating for many astronomers and aurora hunters, the month of July makes up for this with the chance to view the amazing phenomenon known as noctilucent clouds. These magical ethereal shimmering clouds reach the highest altitude of all clouds and are created by ice crystals in the upper atmosphere that reflect sunlight. Noctilucent clouds, or NLC, may be seen by anyone in mid-northern latitudes between 40 and 85 degrees north, with those at more northerly latitudes having slightly better chances of seeing an NLC display. We had some great displays last month and last year we had several incredible NLC displays and so let's keep our fingers crossed that we have another good NLC season this year. On to general nighttime sights now, looking towards the north throughout July, the head of Draco the dragon appears straight above near the zenith in the middle of the night, bright star Capella and the upper half of Auriga are visible above the northern horizon, Leo can be seen setting in the west and Pegasus and Andromeda are becoming easier to spot rising in the east. Looking south, Sagittarius along with the Milky Way core, the upper half of Scorpius plus the bright red star on Taurus can be seen just above the southern horizon, with the serpent bearer Ophiuchus placed just above them. The asterism, the summer triangle consisting of the three brightest stars from the constellations Cygnus, Lyra and Aquila, is beginning to dominate the southern skies and will continue to remain prominent for several months. Hercules remains high in the sky near the zenith and Libra and Virgo are beginning to follow Leo, sinking towards the west. General bright planet view now, gas giant Jupiter reached solar conjunction on the 24th of June and so will start the month too close to the sun to be visible but will reappear in the morning twilight skies around halfway through July. Jupiter remains in Gemini throughout July. Evening planet Mars still remains quite hard to spot, appearing fairly low above the western horizon just after sunset and will gradually become harder and harder to observe as it slowly moves towards the sun. Mars starts July in Leo and ends the month in Virgo. Throughout July, morning planet Venus will remain fairly easy to spot in the early morning eastern skies just before sunrise. Even though Venus will slowly move closer to the sun due to the morning ecliptic becoming Coming steeper throughout July, coupled with the mornings becoming darker as the sun starts sinking lower beneath the horizon at night, Venus will become easier to observe towards the end of the month. Venus starts the month in Taurus and ends July in the upper reaches of Orion as it travels towards Gemini. Saturn is slowly becoming easier to see as it continues to move away from the sun, rising in the east at around midnight at the start of the month and around 11pm at the end of the month and disappearing from view in the southeast during dawn. Saturn remains in Pisces throughout June. Evening planet Mercury remains very hard to spot 
spot an evening twilight despite reaching greatest eastern elongation on the 4th of the month and Mercury remains in Cancer throughout July. Okay, let's begin looking at our highlights for the month of July. There's a great selection of celestial events this month, including some meteor showers and kicking off the month will be a meeting of the Moon and Spica. On the evening of the 3rd of July, the 60% illuminated waxing gibbous moon will pay a close visit to Spica, the brightest star of the constellation Virgo. Look to the southwest after sunset for a chance to see this meeting. On the 4th of July, the speedy and elusive planet Mercury reaches a point in its orbit around the Sun that is known as Greatest Eastern Elongation. At this moment in time, Mercury will appear at its furthest distance away from the Sun in the evening skies from our viewpoint here on Earth. Greatest elongations are usually the best time to spot the inferior planets in our solar system, and although it will still be extremely hard to find Mercury, with it being very close to the horizon, tonight will be the best chance to spot Mercury in July. If you want to have a go at finding Mercury, look towards the northwestern horizon just after sunset on this evening. On the night of the 7th, the 91% illuminated waxing gibbous moon will appear very close by to the red star Antares, the brightest star of the constellation of Scorpius. Look to the south from darkness for a chance to observe this pairing. The night of the 10th will host the full moon of July, which is known to some as the Buck Moon. Don't worry if you don't get to see the moon on the 10th, it will also appear full on the nights adjacent to the 10th too. On the morning of the 13th, the planet Venus will pay a close visit to the bright star Aldebaran, the brightest star in the constellation of Taurus. If you are to use a pair of binoculars or a telescope to observe this meeting, you may also be able to spot several other bright stars that form the open star cluster known as the Hyades. Look to the northeast during the morning twilight before sunrise for a chance to view this celestial gathering. On the night of the 16th of July, the 72% illuminated waxing gibbous moon will appear close by to the amazing winged planet Saturn. For those with binoculars or telescopes, the night of the 16th will also be a good opportunity to try and find the faint planet Neptune. So as an extra challenge, why not try to see if you can spot a faint blue point of light just above and left of Saturn. If you can, that's Neptune. In the morning of the 22nd, the 9% illuminated waning crescent moon will appear close by to the super bright planet Venus. Look to the northeast during the morning twilight before sunrise for a chance to view this meeting. Also keep an eye out for Jupiter close to the horizon. The following morning on the 23rd, an extremely thin 3% illuminated waning crescent moon will pay a close visit to the gas giant Jupiter. This will be a hard one to observe requiring a clear view of the northeastern horizon just before sunrise. On the 24th of July, the moon will reach its new phase leaving the sky is free from natural light pollution. This means the nights on and around the 24th will be ideal for viewing faint objects in the sky and are taking photos of the night sky. On the evening of the 28th, the 17% illuminated waxing crescent moon will appear close by to the red planet Mars. Another hard one to observe, but if you want to have a go, look towards the western horizon after sunset on this date. On the evening of the 30th, similar to the start of the month, the 34% illuminated waxing crescent moon will pay a close visit to the star Spica, the brightest star of Virgo. Look towards the southwest after sunset for a chance to view this pairing. And on the same night, the 30th of July, our final highlight for the month will take place. The peak of the Alpha Capricornid and Southern Delta Acrid meteor showers. The Alpha Capricornid shower is active between the 3rd of July and the 15th of August. And under perfect conditions, the Alpha Capricornids can produce up to 5 meteors per hour. The Southern Delta Acrid meteor shower is active between the 12th of July and the 23rd of August. And under perfect conditions, can produce up to 25 meteors per hour. Unfortunately for us in the UK, both meteor showers are better placed for Southern Hemisphere observers. However, it's still worth heading out on the peak and nights around the peak, as the Alpha Capricornids is known for its bright meteors, and both meteor showers combined together can produce up to 30 meteors per hour. Not only this, on the peak night of the 30th, the moon will set at 10.37pm, leaving the sky free from natural light pollution, so we could be in for quite a good show of meteors. For more details on the Capricornid and Aquarid meteor showers, please read our comprehensive meteor your shower posts on our Facebook page. So that wraps up another month and as you can see there's lots of exciting astronomical events to look out for this July and we hope you all get to enjoy some of them when you're out under the skies. We hope you enjoyed this edition of our night sky guide and we hope this information helps you all in being able to see some of the amazing celestial events that we have throughout this July. If you like this video and found it useful make sure you press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more astronomy content. As always, if you head out to enjoy the night sky at any point in the near future, we wish you good luck and clear skies. Maybe you had space strike. Not all looking up like a footballer. Yeah, okay. It's fine. Okay. Stay. Right, it's, it's filming. Yes. We're here in Scarborough and we've got an amazing. Uh,
<laughs> we have had. Yeah. Well, we've still got it. I mean, it's not amazing anymore. Well, it is. It still looks good. Okay. Is it felt big? Yeah, I haven't stopped it. We're Do here in Scarborough and we've got an amazing NLC display here. You're going to have to start again because oh. I was talking over you. Right now. It's still recording. It's still recording. Luna, what are you doing? Go away. <laughs> Is it still recording? Yeah, I haven't yeah. stopped it. Okay. We're here in Scarborough and... Oh, We're here in... <laughs> no. <laughs> We're here in Scarborough and we've got an amazing NLC display, as you can see going on behind me and... Yeah. <laughs>